Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto and today Chris we are taking a cheeky look at XRP, SEC and KIC or KIN cryptocurrencies uh, and you're going to be questioning yourselves how do these things or these three different things relate to each other uh, and we're going to go, go through an SEC a lawsuit that was filed against KIC uh, for the cryptocurrency KIN and how this actually relates to the Ripple lawsuit and XRP in the future. So this is going to be hopefully a relatively interesting one for you guys, kind of give you some hope uh, and some light at the end of the tunnel here. So if you find it useful, do definitely go ahead and smash that like button for Chris. He really appreciates it, as do I. And if you're new to the channel, do go ahead and subscribe. By subscribing, you will be kept up to date with all the videos and live streams that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Right, Chris, anything you want to add at this point, or should we just jump straight over to the desktop and see what's going on? Yeah, I think we'll, yeah, we'll just jump straight over to, to the desktop, Nick. Let's do it. Fantastic. Right, here we are, right? So the SEC uh, basically obtains the final judgment um, against Kick um, Interactive for unregistered offerings, right? So this is the same kind of thing that Ripple are facing here. They basically sold um, some cryptocurrency uh, called KIN um, and uh, basically, you know, they should have registered them according to the SEC as a security and therefore got slapped with a fine uh, and then business as usual, right? So um, this actually came in on the 21st, I believe it was, uh, of, um, yeah, 21st of October here. Uh, so this year, right, um, they finally had settled it's all done um you know they got a fine of five million i think it was yeah five million dollar penalty um that they had to pay uh, the sec for these unlicensed uh, or unregistered securities that they supposedly sold uh, and that was uh, kin right and with, you're probably thinking why does this matter well ripple are basically facing the same thing right so let's just park brad and park chris keep them in isolation and just focus on Ripple. Ripple is accused of selling, uh, you know, basically unregistered securities in the same way that Kick Interactive are, right, or, or did. Um, so on that note, uh, both Kick Interactive and Ripple are in the same boat, right? So here we can see a, a case that's just closed in 21st of October uh, with a $5 million penalty. Um, and obviously Ripple will be facing the same kind of thing, whether they'll settle, whether they'll win uh, and it wasn't a security, which, you know, majority of the world believe it's not a security anyway. Uh, most of the G20, it's not a security. But whether or not, you know, the US will just slap them with a fine anyway uh, is probably most likely what will happen, considering governments are, you know, begging for money uh, this, this day and age, aren't they, Chris? I mean, uh, I've seen so many letters and stuff trying to trying to get, get their taxes and whatnot. But anyway, uh, that aside, I think that they'll get slapped with a fine uh, and it'll be business as usual afterwards. And what I mean by that, Chris, is if we go ahead and take a look at the chart here, this is kin. Okay, so um, it, what I say is business as usual because the lawsuit was a lot of sideways action here. Uh, and then on the uh, 20th and the 21st, once that action had kind of, you know, um, you know completed, we saw some green candles, Chris, green candles, uh, and they mm -hmm. continued all the way up uh, to 26th of um, October. There's a big red candle, you know, a bit of a major action there. We can call that a 50% or so uh, Fib retrace, which I can show you that here. We can just uh, go ahead and throw this on uh, because we, we would assume that actually a 50% Fib retracement level is actually an acceptable level to be, be looking at. Let's see if it was any lower than that. No, it hit <laughs> spot on. Could you believe it? It's like, uh, it's like you know, the technical analysis doesn't matter, a lot of people say, but uh, here you can see it slap bang on that 50% retracement level, okay? So it shot up, uh, retraced 50% sideways action, was trading in here a little bit, but you know, most of the closing and stuff was happening up here. Um, so actually a pretty good result for something that's, uh, you know, was uh, an unregistered security, right? Uh, all of this sideways action, as soon as it's over, SECs have settled it, paid the penalty, and boom, the market continues to grow. But it didn't stop there. Obviously, it continued to grow, right? So currently, you know, in recent days, we've seen actions up here. This is the first uh, FIB extension level, right? So I'm just going to pull that this way so you can get an idea of what this actually looks like. This extension level here is basically the one6 
uh, one eight right fib extension level, which we obviously went up higher, uh, and you know we're in this zone, so right on that line, that cusp of it. Now, there's probably uh, if I were to flick this into looking at the history, there's probably loads of reasons why this um, particular currency is flicking around that zone. But you can see obviously all of these other exception levels, which will be climbing in due course as well. So the point of this video, Chris, really is to illustrate that even with an SEC lawsuit that is exactly the same as the one that is facing Ripple. Uh, you know, this is what happens afterwards. It's a very positive market, is what you say, Chris? Yeah, like, and, and this is one, one of the reasons why we're, we're still bullish on XRP. And it's one of the reasons why I'm still purchasing XRP and my position's actually increased, not decreased. That's exactly it, yeah. So, I mean, there's lots of technical reasons why this area is where they're currently at. This is all pre uh, pre the initial um, lawsuit, right? And the lawsuit happens uh, and you'll see it was trading sideways. This is the kind of stuff that I'm expecting to happen, um, you know, for XRP until we get that, uh, that finalized, uh, you know, note for what XRP is, you know, as of today, a security, which is ultimately what I think will happen. Um, so yeah, really positive action thereafter. Um, so really interesting, you know, it is a case like this uh, that settled so recently as well that we can actually use it in <laughs> in our uh, in our findings against a Ripple as well. Um, so Chris, is there anything else you want to add at this point? Um, only the fact that you know they lost, right? Yes, Which I think yeah. you know that there's there's a real possibility that Ripple could win this as well. So you know. We've seen this when, when um, you know, a project loses the case. You know, it'd be interesting to see what would happen and how bullish it would be if Ripple were to win that case. So, you know, I think we'll probably do a, a separate video, won't we, Nick, just on other reasons, because there's more than just this one reason. But we thought it was it would be good to just sort of articulate it uh, in a video to, to everybody. Um, as to what, what we've seen historically with something like this. Absolutely. And guys, I'm just going to put this on the screen here so you can kind of get an idea. Um, <laughs> that price movement from the low point here to the recent high point up there is 2,021% growth, right? After they were found guilty of selling unregistered securities. So a bit of perspective, hopefully, for you guys to just see, you know, it isn't the end of the world. Um, and in the case of Ripple, you know, this is a US related is issue. It doesn't affect anywhere else in the world. And once it is over, uh, boy, I'm expecting some pretty green, green candles coming. Uh, you know, so let's go ahead and take a look at where XRP is currently right to this day. Um, you know, so ultimately, this is the action right we've seen, right? We've seen all that momentum lost instantly. Uh, we've seen the low points here of 17 cents, uh, not quite piercing below that 16.8 uh, is a support level that I have drawn out here. Um, but I, you know, I have drawn on a few additional levels here because ultimately I would actually prefer to see XRP drop below 16.8 cents, right? Because that just means that I'm going to be buying. Uh, I'm not currently buying. Chris has been buying, but uh, I'm I'm waiting for it to drop below 16.8. Uh, if it even does, right? if it doesn't, I'm I'm happy with with it anyway. I've got a nice position in XRP that I have not liquidated, and have zero intention of liquidating until you know my actual you know a return on investment is realised. Um, so you know if it does drop below 16 cents. I will be buying up uh, around that 10 cent level for sure. Uh, and I won't be buying small amounts of XRP. I'll be making some large purchases of XRP in that zone. Um, and I'll just have a really nice position to you know, capitalize on once this, um, this whole SEC nonsense is over with Ripple because I'm confident, I am very, very confident as you are too, Chris, with your recent purchases of XRP, that this will just blow over. Um, and I'm talking about Ripple specifically, um, and not obviously Brad and Chris. Mm. Um, you know, those guys, as far as I'm concerned, that's a totally separate issue. Uh, they, they're being filed separately. That's for them to figure out. Um, and I think if Chris and Brad were to be found guilty for whatever reason, then I think, you know, Ripple and the uh, shareholders of Ripple will potentially have to... Um, address what that looks like for Ripple from a PR point of view at a later date. But ultimately, I'm still confident in Ripple, everything that they're doing in terms of creating um, these 
cross-border payment solutions and a whole host of other um, you know, use cases that they are building upon um, for the XRP ledger and XRP um, as a cryptocurrency. So yeah, there's lots of things going on um, that haven't changed to this day and incredibly bullish on XRP even now with um, you know the <laughs> fantastic opportunity, I guess, that's been presented um, for investors to buy very cheap XRP once again. Yeah, and there were people begging to buy XRP at cheaper <laughs> prices, right? And now people, you know, the, the, well, I mean, there was people saying, I'd love to buy it at 30 cent. Well, it's below 30 cent now. And people now are saying, oh, uh, I want to buy under 10 cent. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. That's exactly the problem. But guys, if you found this useful and informative, then definitely do go ahead and smash that like button for Chris. He really appreciates it, as do I. And if you're new to the channel, then do go ahead and subscribe. By subscribing, you will be kept up to date with all the videos and live streams that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And with all that said, we hope you have a fantastic day and we'll catch you all in the next one. Yeah, take care, everyone.